So there, it's all you. It's all on you guys now. Okay, awesome. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the NRES student-led webinar. We are so excited for you all to be here with us today. Uh, we have a variety of speakers talking to you today about why they chose NRES, uh, what their passions are, and most importantly, what we're all involved in at Purdue and within NRES. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities to share with you all, so I guess let's get started. Um, my name is Cody Dottino, and I will be the co-host for today's webinar. Um, first, I'd like to share a little bit about uh, who we are as students and as a program. Um, as students, we are all very passionate and dedicated to the program, as well as bettering the earth. Uh, we are all very involved in some type of academic or extracurricular, and we really pride ourselves on the knowledge that we gain from our interdisciplinary program, professors, and other peers. We are committed to achieving our goals and creating a wholesome community here at Purdue where our students feel welcomed and encouraged to keep learning and growing as individuals and professionals. Um, with this being said, from all of this passion and dedication, the NRES major has grown significantly um, in terms of students as well as opportunities. Currently, we have 160 students enrolled, uh, which does not include pre-environmental science students. Um, we also have, expa have expanded and revamped our concentrations to include six of the environment's uh, major areas of concern. Um, in addition to all of this, there are a multitude um, of opportunities that NRES students can get involved within. Um, within this webinar, we will be teaching you about each concentration and what it offers in terms of experience and career choices. Um, we will also have representatives from each concentration introducing themselves and sharing their student involvement opportunities like research opportunities or internships. And uh, we hope you all will enjoy the information that we are going to present to you today. The six concentrations that NRES offers is watershed management, climate and energy solutions, environmental quality and restoration, environmental policy and analysis, sustainability science, and emerging environmental challenges. So I guess without further ado, I'll let my peer Ryland Barton take over with watershed management. Yeah, thank you, Cody. So watershed management is for people kind of uh, like me who are not only interested in hydrology, but in terms of the vast amounts of watersheds in and around the United States um, and just using those as effectively and as sustainably as possible for all of society's needs, such as agriculture or just drinking water. And a lot of the jobs that come out of watershed management or hydrology are like water quality analyst or water resource specialist or a groundwater hydrologist. And in order to concentrate in watershed management, some of the courses you have to take are like environmental hydrology, soil conservation and watershed man uh, water management, community involvement and natural resource management and uh, landscape level planning are just a few of these courses all, uh, for all things water. Next slide. Um, so a bit more about me. I'm a sophomore. I'm from Carmel, Indiana. So the roundabout capital of the, of the United States. Um, uh, involvements, I'm in Ag Ambassadors. I'm an undergraduate research assistant for the Purdue Hydro Hydrological Impacts Group, or FIG for short, and I'm a member of the Gemini Cooperative House. And I think my favorite aspect of NRES is just the variety of concentrations that you can pick from. It's nice that you have, you can sort of find your niche in environmental science because it's such a, a broad field. And so it's nice to hone in on what exactly it is you like. So. Um, in terms of some experience or rather what drew me to watershed management or hydrology, uh, the book, uh, The Death and the Life of the Great Lakes really propelled me to uh, investigate hydro, uh, hydrology as well as just like watershed management. I was reading it my, or I finished it my senior year of high school. And that's when I was looking at colleges and I saw that Purdue was offering NRES and they had sort of, uh, they had watershed management and that was uh, sort of like what really incentivized me to uh, roll into Purdue and NRES is because they offered that and it was a lot of what I was looking for. Um, so after I graduate from Purdue, I'm hoping to go right to grad school and then possibly work for the EPA or some governmental organization, but I haven't completely thought that far ahead. Uh, the one internship I have done so far at Purdue was a uh, summer research intern for the Purdue Hydrological Impacts Group. So 
there's two aspects of it. And one of them is what Kendall's going to get into later. But the field aspect of it was this uh, work on this project called drainage water recycling. So over at, at Purdue's economy farm called Acre, there's a wetland that we use sort of as a natural storage water tank to irrigate a nearby uh, corn and soybean field. And while the, uh, the some of the project didn't go as well as we had liked, it was still a lot of fun just um, learning not, not, ju not just about watersheds like the wetland, but in terms of how essential it is for agriculture and kind of getting to explore that agricultural aspect because, you know, NRES is in the College of Ag, but you kind of feel a bit displaced because you're not completely an ag kid, but we got to still explore that, that aspect of it. And as you can see in this picture here, there is a, um, there's a uh, drip irrigation system uh, from the wetland and it helps to, and that's what we use to irrigate the uh, corn. So, yeah. Awesome, thank you so much, Ryland. Alrighty, hi everyone, my name's Hannah and I'll be explaining the climate and energy solutions concentration. So this concentration is a great option if you're someone that's more interested in climate change, geosciences or physics and just physical sciences, including renewable energy sources. It provides a good evaluation of climate impacts, adaptation and mitigation and alternative energy solutions as well. There's a lot of freedom in what you can pick in your electives in this selection, but a couple required courses include weather and climate, meteorology, physics of climate, global green politics, and modern mechanics or physics one. Awesome, so a little bit more about me is my name's Hannah. I'm a junior in climate energy solutions and a double major in political science. I'm originally from Fort Wayne, Indiana, so around two hours from Lafayette. In a couple of my involvements, I'm starting an undergraduate research this semester. I'm an intern for campus planning, architecture, and sustainability, and I'm in some student organizations, including Purdue Student Government, Boiler Green Initiative, and the Degree Plus Student Association. I'd say my favorite aspect of NRES is definitely probably the wide selection of learning opportunities it offers and the true customizability it gives to students in the concentrations in the past that you pick. And so a little bit more about what drew me to NRES. I started originally in pre-environmental studies because I knew I wanted to enter the environmental field in some aspect and really loved how many different paths that NRES offered and how you could accommodate courses from departments across campus into your degree plan. A couple of my future goals would to be hopefully attending graduate school and working for the government, um, ideally in the Department of State or NOAA or NASA. And so this summer I worked as a policy analyst intern for the US Department of Transportation. I worked in their environmental science and engineering division supporting primarily the air tour management plan, which is pictured on the right here. It's basically um, a map that the FAA uses to describe how many commercial flights can be flown over national parks in a certain time period. And so compiling relevant policies for that, as well as looking over air quality data and just the biological effects on natural life and tribal areas in the region. And then this semester, I hope to be starting more geosciences research and I'll be starting studying stratospheric aerosols in the analytical chemistry department to help see the chemical makeup of the atmosphere and how it's affected in different areas. But that was a little bit about me. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much, Hannah. All right, um, I'll be speaking on environmental policy and analysis. Um, it's a concentration that focuses primarily on policy, management, and economics to address large-scale environmental challenges um, through regulations, compliance, and sustainability. Um, there's also a ton of freedom in the classes you take within this major, um, but some that you're required to take are environmental policy and analysis, global green politics, and science communication, as well as a lot of selectives. And then I also included a picture of Olivia and I at the White House this summer. Olivia was unfortunately unable to make it, but I'm sure if you can have a chance to talk with her, she'd love to tell you more about that. All right, hi guys, my name is Anna Hampton. I'm a senior studying environmental policy and analysis and political science. Um, I'm from Lafayette, Indiana. Um, my involvements at Purdue include NRES ambassadors, Purdue Student Government, Boiler Green Initiative, uh, Science Olympiad, Mortar Board, Pi Sigma Alpha, and the League of Women Voters. Um, my favorite aspect of NRES is the interdisciplinary program. 
and the opportunities that's includes and overall just the community. There's so many resources here and so many um, people that you can truly become friends with and resources for all of your classes. Um, I've had two internships within the federal government. Um, my first internship was with the Environmental Protection Agency's Criminal Investigation Division, um, which I virtually worked from my sophomore to junior year during COVID. Um, this past summer, I interned with the Department of Energy's um, Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Division within the Weatherization and Intergovernmental Programs in Washington, D.C. So what initially drew me to my major was I'm extremely passionate about protecting our natural environment and truly wanted to find a career that I could make a direct impact in. Um, I plan to pursue a career in environmental law. Thank you so much, Anna. Hi everyone, so I'm Jenna Rada. I am also a senior in environmental policy and analysis and I'm also from Fort Wayne. Um, on campus, I've been involved in a whole bunch of things, but my favorites have definitely been NRAS ambassadors, Purdue Habitat for Humanity. Um, I worked as an undergraduate research assistant studying soils. Um, and I've also been involved with Purdue orientation programs. Um, and my favorite aspect of NRES is definitely the community as well. I really appreciate that every time you're leaving your um, house, you're always gonna be able to uh, find some familiar faces out on campus. So when I was like coming into college, I really had no idea what I wanted to study. Um, and I, but I didn't know that I had grown up in like outdoor spaces um, for a lot of my life. And so NRES was automatically like in the running. And then I was also, because I didn't know what I wanted to study, um, I really appreciated that NRES like had so many different avenues that I could take um, even just within one department. So um, I picked, picked NRES and I uh, it ended up being a really good fit and I stuck with it. Um, so, in the future, my goals are just um, to graduate. I'm probably going to spend some time outside of school uh, traveling and working um, after I graduate. And then I'm also considering coming back to law school after that. Um, so that's um, <clears throat> definitely something that I'm considering as well. And something that has really helped me solidify my like interest in it, public policy has been my internship this summer with United States Hydrogen Alliance, um, where I was helping to make some model legislation that is going to be presented to legislators um, pretty soon here. So that's a little bit about me. Awesome, Jen, thank you so much. Hi, I'm Amanda, and I'm going to talk about the sustainability science concentration. So under sustainability science, we try to work to find a balance between our natural resources and the growing human population, which is a very wicked problem right now. Um, and some jobs we can get out of it are different governmental agencies like the Department of Natural Resources or IDEM, the Indiana Department of Environmental Management for the state of Indiana. Companies are also really looking for sustainable officers and sustainable engineers coming in to just do little assessments of their carbon footprints and things like that. And then we also have different renewable energy companies and other nonprofits that are looking to hire sustainable officers. Um, our required courses, we have two engineering courses and a principles of sustainability. I also added in that there's an applicable minor, um, which is the ecological and environmental engineering degree with the College of Engineering at Purdue. Um, and it's only, I think, like one or two extra classes to be able to complete that minor. So as you can see on the next slide, I completed that minor already, actually. Um, I'm a senior this year, so I'm done with my minor. I decided to add that. It was only one extra class in my degree, which I really, really liked. And um, that was awesome. I'm originally from Minnesota. And in at Purdue, I'm a part of the Office of Admissions. I work as an ambassador and a junior counselor for the office. I'm also part of Purdue University Dance Marathon, and I was in Boiler Gold Rush for two years out of my four years here. My favorite part of NRES is the ability to customize your degree to be exactly what you want it to be. Um, and I really wanted to focus on the ecology side of things, but also sprinkle in a little bit of engineering, and that's exactly what I got to do. So I was happy about that. Uh, my goal and what drew me to the major are kind of one and the same. So I really want to be able to make sustainable options more accessible for everyone, no matter what your financial status is. I wanna help ensure that people have the opportunity to make the world cleaner and greener. 
Um, and that is my goal later in life. But I thought that NRES was the best way to do that, to get a little bit of the personal aspect of it, also get the policy, the ecology, and then also that little engineering. Uh, this summer, I got a chance to work a little bit with that and spread the love of natural resources to all the kids in the state of Indiana. I worked with the Department of Natural Resources Central Office um, to set up their fishing pond at the state fair, and we got to create other outreach projects for different state parks in the area as well, which is really fun. Thank you so much, Amanda. Okay, so hi, I'm Brittany Bickle and I'm presenting on emerging environmental challenges. Um, so what this option is, is really a flexible, customizable option where you're not finding what you want, but you're really passionate about something you can make pretty much your own concentration and individual course path. Um, so it's a little bit unique. So for me, I'm an environmental education focus. So like on the left, I have all my teaching certifications that I've gotten while at Purdue. Um, so my course path was helped determined by my mentor, my advisor, and Dr. Bowley, and we all worked together to figure out what courses I should take. So my example of required courses would be environmental education, all the other ones listed to give an idea of what I do here. And so I am a senior in emerging issues, and as I said, I focus on environmental education with a dash of naturalist in it. Um, I have a plant biology minor, and I'm originally from Huntington, Indiana. Um, as involvement, uh, I don't do as much this semester, but I am a teaching assistant for the community cross cultures course. So I do a lot of grading. And I run into our lab every week. And then my favorite aspect of NRES is definitely how adaptable it is to each person and how willing Purdue is to work with you. And then what drew me to my major was definitely like, I knew what I wanted to do, but looking at other colleges and other programs, it just wasn't finding it. So NRES was a great option because they literally let me say, I find this really important and it will help me to achieve that. So it makes me also feel like Purdue cares a lot about me. Um, so that's definitely why I picked it. And then my goal is to run an environmental education program for state park. And speaking of state parks, I wanted to talk about two internships. So there's a year-long interpretive naturalist at the Indiana Dunes, where you do a lot of outreach with adults and children and teach about the history of the park. Um, and then there's a summer long camp leadership program, which is you lead activities, you do overnight camp, and then you teach environmental programs to the kids. And then on your off time, it's really cool when you get to talk to park rangers and see like, what they do on their daily life and then the other aspects. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brittany. Um, so another concentration that the program offers is environmental quality and restoration. And so um, this concentration offers coursework in soil physics, um, plant biology, and hazardous waste handling. And it allows students to be prepared for um, of the evaluation, remediation, and um, preservation of our air, water, and soil resources. And this course program really allows for a lot of hands-on science applications, and it allows students to be prepared for um, field work, post-graduation, and lab work as well. Um, so my name is Kendall Daniels, and I'm a junior in the major, and I am minoring in plant biology. I'm originally from Indianapolis, um, and my involvements on campus include NRES ambassadors, I'm an undergraduate research assistant for Purdue Hydrological Impacts Group as well. Um, I'm a part of Environmental Science Club and the Purdue Art Community. And my favorite aspect of NRES is the creativity of the curriculum. I really love that even within the same concentration, all, all students have to take the same exact course um, and you can really create based on your interests. Um, so this summer I was a part of um, a, a pretty pretty large um, internship. It encompassed both the Purdue Hydrological Impacts Group drainage water recycling project that Ryland talked about earlier. And the two of us were also a part of the Indiana Science Assessment for the State Nutrient Reduction Strategy. 
and I know it's a long name, but um, basically we were working on a systematic review of different agricultural practices and their conservation uses for farmers in Indiana, specifically looking at reducing runoff and from agriculture drainage and um, and I, Ryland and I specifically looked at wetlands and um, basically it encompassed reviewing literature and then ultimately pulling together the data we found and um, presenting it to the committee. And as a part of that, I was in the SCARF program, the Summer College of Agriculture Research Fellowship. And um, my projects and research this summer was funded by the College of Agriculture. So I was given a stipend every month um, and in return for that stipend, I was a part of their workshops weekly. And at the end of the summer, I produced a research poster. And so this kind of encompasses why I was drawn to the major. Like I, I really love the multidisciplinary nature um, of NRES. And I love that there's endless opportunity for learning and curiosity and creativity and so many different avenues to take. And I hope that post-graduation, especially after my um, research experience. I hope to work a few years and then eventually attend graduate school. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kendall. Okay. So, hi. Uh, my name is Cody Vitino. I'm a senior in environmental quality and restoration. I'm originally from Long Island, New York. Uh, some of my involvements within Purdue involve being an NRES ambassador. Um, I'm also an undergraduate research assistant for uh, the Purdue Hydrologic Impacts Group. Um, and I also am the public relation and fund fundraising chair for the Marine Biology Club. And I would definitely say that my favorite aspect of NRES is the hands-on learning experiences within soil physics, within the hazardous waste, within the field skills class, um, and you know, within a variety of classes, not just the required ones. So what drew me to my major was um, the desire to restore coastal shores, um, specifically uh, Long Island's coastal shores. Um, I grew up swimming in the ocean. And when I started swimming with, you know, plastic wrappers and pollution and seeing the degradation of the coastline, um, it really made me passionate and want to do something about it. Um, so my first internship was a wildlife rehabilitation um, program with a nonprofit um, Program with a nonprofit company um, on Long Island called the New York Marine Rescue Center. Um, this experience entailed rescuing the animal, rehabilitating it, and eventually releasing it back into the wild. Um, and it was super interesting and eye opening to see the work that goes into uh, nonprofits. And then this past summer, I was an air sampling technician with an environmental construction consulting company. Um, and I got a lot of experience with environmental consulting, project drawings, logs, other official documents. And I also learned how uh, crucial communication is within environmental construction consulting um, due to, you know, being there on site and having to communicate with your project manager as well as independent contractors. Um, and within the future, I would love to work for an ecological consulting firm uh, with a focus in coastal environments and wetlands. My name is Eva Curtis, and I am a senior in the Environmental Quality and Restoration Concentration. I am originally from Angola, Indiana, which is about three hours from uh, campus. My involvements include representing our program by being an NRES ambassador and working with the amazing program director, Dr. Bowling, as an undergraduate research assistant in the Purdue Hydrologic Impacts Group. My favorite as aspect of NRES is being part of such a small, tight-knit community and having friends in every class um, while still being on such a large campus. So what drew me to NRES is my love for the environment. Um, growing up, I was constantly outside. And then I guess starting to learn about the environmental issues that are going on in the world made me decide that I wanted to dedicate my career to hopefully making the earth a better place and contributing um, a positive impact to those issues. Um, my goal is eventually to focus on restoring naked, native ecosystems with an emphasis on restoring those that endangered species are dependent on. 
So I have had two really amazing um, job opportunities. The first one was two summers ago with Little River Wetlands Project in Fort Wayne. Um, that was a nonprofit and I was able to contribute to one of the largest urban wetland restoration projects in the country, which was amazing. And I was able to engage a lot of community members on the importance of wetlands and partake in bat and turtle research with Purdue Fort Wayne professors, which was also really fun. As you can see in the picture here, I'm measuring the carapace of a turtle. Um, and then this past summer, I worked at Pokagon State Park with the DNR as a management or a resource management technician. And I was able to treat invasive species in a degraded oak savanna, which is actually an endangered ecosystem in the Midwest. And I was able to get certified um, to do bat surveys and was able to get my pesticide applicator license. And I'm super thankful for both of these opportunities and to take the tools that they gave me to my future jobs and um, in my future careers. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Eva. Hi, my name is Avery Fest, and I'm also a senior in the Environmental Quality and Restoration. Um, so I have also a minor in Environmental Policy and Politics. I'm originally from Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and I'm in um, I'm an ambassador for our major. I was the treasurer for Helping Pause. I was in Zeta Tau Alpha and I was their green chair, which is a sorority here on campus. And I'm also an undergraduate research assistant. My favorite aspect of NRAS is that you have a variety of learning styles. So no matter if you're hands-on or a visual learner, you can find it in any of your classes. So what drew me to NRES is my passion from a young age for nature and the flexibility and support of the NRES track to really follow whatever passions you have, whether it's through research or your classes. Um, my goal is when I graduate to work for an environmental consulting firm, and I would love to have an emphasis on environmental restoration projects. Um, I've had the opportunity to have two separate research experiences. Freshman and sophomore year, I was in the botany and plant pathology lab with Dr. Gordon Nickel, McNichol. And um, there I worked with lycophytes and I worked with their photosynthesis curves to see where they would photosynthesize, photosynthesize better. And um, currently I work for the Natural Resources and Spatial Analysis Lab, which is in the Department of Forestry and Natural Resources. And I work with Dr. Songlin Fei. And I do a lot with Northern Red Oak Phenology. I, take and analyze the data from that. And I also am doing a lot of projects with digitizing old research documents. And I work with LIDAR, which is in the pictures you can see. Um, and I also have had two internships. I worked with Wachtell Tree Science in Wisconsin two summers ago. And I also this past summer worked with Rucker and Milky, which is a civil engineering firm in Wisconsin. And I did a lot of their civil engineering permits and I did wetlands lineations and worked on those reports and then also just did overall environmental screenings for their company. Thank you. Thank you, Avery. Hi, I'm Zach Neff. Uh, I'm a senior also in environmental quality and restoration. Uh, and I'm from Lebanon, Indiana. So some of the extracurricular uh, involvements on campus that I'm in. Uh, I'm an NRES ambassador. I'm the president of the Environmental Science Club. I'm also in Wildlife Society and Society of American Foresters. Uh, and I've tried out multiple uh, environmental clubs on campus. There's a lot of them. Uh, and I think like a lot of other people, my favorite aspect of NRES is the hands-on coursework. Um, so the field skills class that Dr. Bowling teaches, um, soil science, and then different labs in botany uh, and forestry, I've really enjoyed. So what drew to me drew me to NRES uh, was just always loving to read about natural systems, um, and then sort of seeing that our natural systems aren't in very good balance uh, in most places. Um, and I really want my career to have an impact um, to restore those ecosystems and conserve rare plants uh, and wildlife. So some of the internships that I've been involved in, I'm currently a FNR research technician in Dr. Saunders lab. And what I do there um, is I helped um, set up and then collect data for 
a um, white, white and red oak um, regeneration study. So trying to see um, how different silvicultural practices will impact um, oak savannas and open oak woodlands um, with white oak regeneration of those systems. And then for the past three years, I have worked at Niches Land Trust and I'm a uh, land steward with them. So I do a lot of invasive species removal, um, do prescribed fires, rare plant conservation, um, and a little bit of public outreach to sort of influence people to use conservation practices on their own land uh, and help volunteer with us to get ecosystems back in order. This picture on the right here is pretty cool. Uh, I'm pollinating a state endangered orange fringed orchid. Awesome, thank you so much, Zach. Um, thank you everyone for sharing about all the concentrations. Um, we'll have some time at the end for any questions you may have. So keep those in mind or you can post them in the chat for one of us to answer. Um, but we will now be moving on to um, extracurriculars and clubs offered on Purdue's campus um, that are uh, more specifically geared for NRES students. So Purdue has a variety of environmental related clubs. Uh, some of the most popular NRES clubs include Boiler Green Initiative um, and Environmental Science Club. Um, and we will both, we'll be hearing uh, from both of those representatives soon. And another great opportunity offered here at Purdue includes study abroad, which uh, Ryland will be talking about as well. Um, other clubs include the Botany Club and the Marine Biology uh, Club, and like I said earlier, a variety of others. Um, we also have some NRES students involved in intramural sports and Greek life, which is just a great representation of just how much NRES students can balance their schedules um, while also pr prioritizing their education. Um, so here is Hannah with Anna with BGI. Hi guys, um, I am the current president of Boiler Green Initiative. Um, so I thought we learned best just through pictures. So here's some pictures from the past year. Um, BGI is a sustainability-based club on campus that strives to promote an inclusive environment for anyone to learn about sustainability or kind of get involved with um, campus action, uh, whether on campus or in our community. Um, so we have a lot of sustainability trips, a lot of community service. You can see some of our trash cleanups. Um, we visited some solar farms. We maintain um, one of the campus uh, rain gardens, um, as well as some other community service projects. Um, it's just a fun and uh, interesting way to get involved with sustainability on campus. Thank you. So another environmentally uh, related club is the Environmental Science Club. Um, I've been the president for the past few semesters. And um, here are some pictures of our events from last year. So we're fairly similar to BGI. Um, we do probably a little more recreation uh, and off-campus activities. Um, so some of our pictures here are um, a herping, herping hike we went on, which is looking for reptiles and amphibians um, and identifying those. Uh, we've done different social activities like painting, uh, a Bob Ross movie night. Um, we done, we've done native plant giveaways and rain garden establishment, and then different local hikes, canoe trips, uh, the Wabash River Sampling Blitz, um, and doing local conservation work, um, volunteering with Niches Land Trust or Celery Bog to uh, sort of reforest and uh, reestablish native plants in those areas. Awesome, thank you, Zach. And now we will hear from Ryland uh, with Study Abroad. Yeah, so I went on a Study Abroad to Costa Rica and just a quick overview of the Study Abroad program. Uh, the College of Ag gives uh, about 35 Study Abroads a uh, for two semesters. So you can either go on spring break, you can get, go on winter break, you can go on summer break, you can go just for a May semester, or it's called like a May semester or something like that. Um, you can go uh, two semesters, you can go one semester. So the Costa Rica one I uh, went on was just for spring break. 
and we learn about the community and sustainability around Costa Rica as well as just traditional agriculture, how they do it in there, because it's obviously completely different from the United States and the Midwest. It was a lot of fun. We got to see so many beautiful aspects of Costa Rica, and we also got to have just a ton of fun, and it was just nice to meet everyone uh, on the trip. Uh, we really came close together as a group, and it's everyone who went on the trip was in uh, the College of Ag, and there was actually a few MES majors, so just made a ton of fun, uh, made a ton of friends and had a lot of fun, so yeah. Awesome, thank you so much, Ryland. Okay, so now we will move into our questionnaire panel. Um, we are all eager to answer your curiosities. Um, so I guess this is your time now. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. So actually not all internships are paid. I had an internship two summers ago um, and my position was paid. It was for a nonprofit, of course. I'm pretty sure all private companies and government, not all government internships, but I think most internships do pay. But um, this, the one that I worked at two summers ago actually had one unpaid position and one paid position. So I think that it just depends on where you end up working and what um, field you're um, trying to get an internship in. Yes, I would say just to add to that, um, my first internship with the uh, New York Marine Rescue Center with the wildlife rehabilitation uh, that was also unpaid. However, um, within the next summer with the air sampling technician within the consulting firm that was paid. So I guess it's really um, which sector you are in and what they have to offer and what they what their funds look like. All right, did you see that Allison is offering to answer questions for all of you? <laughs> Allison, maybe you can start by telling them um, where, what have you been doing in the last seven years? Oh, goodness. Let's get my camera on. Hello, Allison, graduated in 2015. Since then, went to Canada for two years on a Fulbright grant, received my master's there. So if you're thinking about grad school, studying abroad, grad school abroad, I guess that was. It wasn't too far abroad uh, from Purdue. It probably would have been an eight hour drive, but still enough to keep you on your toes. Worked in South Bend after that for about four years, doing essentially innovation consulting type stuff. Some of it related to sustainability, some of it not. Um, but really focused on project and people management, really some skills I think you guys are learning in all the different clubs and organizations you're leading. Last June, um, we, well, we actually moved up to Minnesota during COVID. Last June started at Health Partners. Um, that's a health system out here, eight hospitals, 80 clinics, a health insurance plan, um, doing sustainability work there. So essentially the sustainability coordinator for a health system, which is pretty uncommon, I would say in Indiana, but um, healthcare sustainability is pretty important and pretty common elsewhere around the country. So, hey everybody. Um, I'm Holly Hudson. I graduated um, a while ago, 1985. Um, it is just great to hear everything you all have to say. Just really exciting with the different um, focus areas. And again, NRES, like I said, one of the strengths is just being able to kind of, you know, after your uh, you know, pick and choose, you know, really what interests you. Um, yeah, I got real excited probably once I got, you might once I got to like junior and senior year, way back, way back when, uh, when you can really get into some of those like field courses and, and really feel like you're, you're learning, learning something that you can use, use in the future. 
Um, and I had an internship in, in Germany at an ecological research institute. And I was just wondering if uh, Purdue still offered, um, it was called the International Association for the Exchange of Students for Technical Experience. That's a mouthful. Um, but even if they don't, it might be, you know, certainly something you might want to look into. Um, I remember applying to both Germany and Australia. Um, and, uh, you know, again, and uh, even on weekends, uh, every weekend there would be a trip, you know, with students from around the globe. Um, and so again, another neat uh, experience they can, can look into. Um, and actually where I work, I work at our regional planning commission for the Chicago metropolitan area. Um, I'm the scene, you know, the, the lone senior or aquatic biologist uh, on staff here. Um, and so we do here at, you know, don't forget about regional planning agencies, regional planning commissions around the United States who get involved in also, you know, policy, um, planning, you know, uh, climate change, uh, energy, water resources. Uh, so it's another another place to look for uh, for your future future careers. Thanks for that reminder, Holly. Um, I have never. I don't know this acronym. Acronym. <laughs> I. How would you even say ISD? Um, Certainly, we do still have um, some international internships and support for those. I, we had at least one student in Germany this last summer doing a research internship. Um, but I don't know if that organization still exists. Well, Laura, I just go I just Googled the, the um, I just copied it from the chat and put it in there. And it looks like, like the website I found was from 2008. So maybe they had it, they haven't had it since 2008. Okay, okay. That was still a pretty long run. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bummer, but plenty of internships out there. Mm -hmm. uh, students, the, Michelle had a question about, I uh, want to know about this, are your student orgs in a lot of fundraisers? Is it, are they any better funded today? What do you think? Um, Boiler Green Initiative, at least, we're primarily funded through grants. And we also tend to try to run as on the lowest budget as possible. Um, so most of our funds that we do raise go directly to trips if we're going to go to a state park or if we're trying to raise funds to complete a service project like we needed money. Uh, we collected hundreds of pounds of bottle caps to make a recycled bench for the local public library and we needed a few hundred dollars for that. So we did a little bit of fundraising, but largely it's grants and just kind of minding our budget. I do think that there might be more money available from student organizations than, I don't know what it was in the past, but I'd say Environmental Science Club seems to be pretty effective at getting grant funds from student organizations. Yeah, so Environmental Science Club has uh, been getting more active with applying for SOGA grants. Uh, and then, so that grant, um, provides funding for just a certain event. Uh, so we've been able to do native plant giveaways and education events, um, and then native plant garden establishments through, the, through those funds. Anna, Michelle's a good question in the chat that I think you could answer. Oh no, it was Allison. Uh, what's, what, uh, PSG has more sustainable activities. What's it was limited in 2015? What's some examples of how PSG and sustainability work together? I'll let Hannah take that one, but I can I can also add to that a little bit. Awesome. So I'm the executive director of sustainability for student government. And a couple of our biggest events last year were Green Week and Earth Week. We did some collaborations with PSSC and BGI. We also hosted some sustainability roundtables every week where we got together faculty and interested students, where we could just talk about sustainability events on campus and initiatives that people might be interested in pursuing, but may not have some outreach for. So I think definitely we didn't have a ton of like forward facing events besides like more socials, um, educational campaigns, Earth Week and Green Week, but we did have a lot of inner club collaborations, which was an awesome thing to come at least last year from out of COVID. Uh, 
I think you're selling yourself short with events, um, but definitely Green Week and Earth Week were great. Um, I was on the committee last year, a lot of like closing drives and some public facing events, a lot of social media and that sort of thing. Um, I'm currently a senator for the College of Agriculture. So within PSG, I'm really working on some environmental legislation, working with um, the University Senate Environmental Committee and Sustainability Committee um, to see what we can do to make campus more sustainable and kind of taking those steps. Um, so PSG is definitely a lot more involved in sustainability, which is a great thing. And Well, students, that was awesome. Like, I loved every minute of that, listening to all. You guys did such a good job preparing, so thank you so much. Um, we did record this, and I expect it to be shared an awful lot. So thank you so much. for. I know you spent a lot of time putting this together, and we really do appreciate it. Um, let's see. I was making sure I didn't miss anything, but yeah, I'm good. Um, so... We have a handful of alums on here. Please remember that the our 50th is coming up in a couple in about a month. Our RSVP deadline is coming up next week, so please get RSVP'd. We are hoping to have um, a big turnout, but we need people to RSVP RSVP for it. And I will follow up with an um, email with the link of the video in case you want to share it. And thank you all for getting on. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Thank Hope you for coming you at the 50th. <laughs> and Allison, it was good to see you in person since I just talked to you on the phone. <laughs> you bet. Good to see you. Like I, <laughs> I mentioned here, I won't be able to make the celebration. I'm on the board of a nature center. We have a retreat that day, um, but hopefully soon. Thanks for joining us tonight, Allison. It was great to meet you. Of course. <laughs> All right. Thank you all so much. Bye guys. Great job.